Alright, I'm just going to quickly run down how uh, you're going to track some titles, which are probably the easiest things to track to uh, some video footage. So, we are going to start in Blender. This one's actually a file I already tracked, just to keep everything moving fast for you. So, uh, imagine this is, you know, your default cube is here already removed. And next we're going to go to motion tracking. Now, um, you're going to take a video and just basically drag it in here and drop it and then it will show up. Now this video as you can see I'm in frame 2600 and I'm tracking all the way to 3600. Uh, if you're tracking your entire video the easiest thing to do is just hit this one set scene frames and then that'll just make the scene last as long as the video is. I'm not going to click that because um, it's going to screw up the whole timeline. This this video is like, you know, 4,500 frames long. Um, so then after that, now this is what it looks like with all my uh, tracking points on it. And there's actually tracking points for already different uh, different sections of this video, so it looks pretty messy right now. But what you're going to do is uh, I like to just go detect features, but before I do that, I will go into extra settings. Depending on how you know your camera is, how sharp it is, and all that, you are going to find certain settings here that you like and certain things you don't like. So typically, I like to drop the correlation. That just means it'll find more points than you know if it's at like 0 0.750, which is what it starts at. And um, I like to up the pattern size a little bit, search size. I don't like it to go too big. Um, and then this is kind of also will depend on your footage so in this case you almost always want to track location and sometimes you might want to add something else so in this case all the motion in the video is scale because I'm, I'm moving away so things are getting bigger and smaller so that's kind of a scale movement so I'm going location and scale and that's just going to help me get you know, a closer, better solve. Uh, personally, I like to go with previous frame just because I find it loses, you know, the the point less often. When I'm on keyframe, uh, the point it's tracking doesn't always match by, you know, for the entire duration of the video. So at least if it's always tracking the most previous frame, then it does a fairly okay job of holding on to that point. So, uh, after you get these points, you know, these things the way you want them, you're going to go ahead, hit detect features. That's going to, you know, put a number of features here. Uh, each one of these boxes is going to be tracked. And then, all I do is I hit forward. And so in this case, you know, typically you start from zero. So you hit forward and then it's just basically going to run through. And it's going to show you all the points as they move. And then, you know, occasionally you'll lose points or things aren't visible or they don't make it all the way to the end of the video. So what I do is I detect features one more time and run it backwards. And then that'll detect all the points backwards. And, you know, then you might get something sort of like this. So this shows all the, uh, that's for another part of the scene. So here we are right here. So this is a fairly steady motion throughout this video. Sometimes you get some big jumps. You know, this is a graph for basically each each tracking point you have. So this one, fairly steady as you can see. Everything's pretty bunched together. So that means every point is kind of moving in a similar motion. Um, you know, when you're moving through a scene and you have different things moving at different speeds towards the camera, you're going to get a lot more variation in what's happening here. So this is kind of one of the easiest scenes you can really track. I'm basically, uh, the camera's moving on a single axis and it's just, you know, basically the z-axis moving straight up from the roof. So very easy to track. Anyways, um, after that, you will want to go here, pick your keyframes. I don't know necessarily always how to pick a good keyframe, I typically just choose by, you know, where is the most important part of 
my animation going to be. So in this case, firstly I always start, you know, I start the track a few seconds early in the video. So in this case 100 frames or 3 seconds about that. Uh, so within about 3 seconds is when I really want the key parts of my animation and then you know for about four or five six seconds it's going to run for so that's that's the bulk of it so I have these 2700 to 2900 are my keyframes and you know your keyframes are actually fairly important it's probably smarter for me to know more about how to choose them but anyways uh, after that you're gonna hit solve camera motion and then you will you know the computer's going to do its thing, it's going to say tracking points, whatever, or solving camera motion, blah, 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 and then you're going to come up with this solve error. So 1.18, not perfect, uh, but it's also not bad. It's going to definitely do for these purposes. And after you have that, you're going to basically want to set up your scene. So this is uh, a part of the three wing, 3D window. And... Oh you're going to want to set up your scene so that it's easy to move you know I like to have uh, you know basically some degree of the axes matching up so it's not spot on but you can see you know cutting with the roof line the y-axis is going this way cutting you know front to back of the house is the x-axis and then you know we have oh, getting all wonky here and then the Z is moving with the same Z of the video so that's pretty much how I want it. So the way we do that is first I like to set the floor. So boom, ground. These are all, you know, the actual floor. This is a grass. Not going to get lower than the ground here. Even although ground isn't always perfectly flat, it's going to do the trick. So boom, hit that floor. Uh, I like to set the origin where the main, you know, animated part or the the 3D portion of my movie is going to be. So then hit the set origin there. And in this case I want to set the x-axis so it's moving more or less up and down. So I probably hit this one, set x-axis, and then I probably hit one right about here or here and set y-axis. And then I always pick two that are semi-close and go set scale and this way it just makes you know all of the uh, the empties that are on here a little smaller and e or you know smaller and easy to work with and see you know what's basically happening behind um, so now we are pretty much ready to move on to the regular stuff you're used to so I am going to go ahead, turn background images back on, and now we're going to go through the layer I already had. So this is going back to the first layer. So what I did was I built a copy of the roof because I'm going to be projecting real shadows from my CG version, my 3D version, and this is my text. And then you'll see I have a lamp here and let's just zoom out a bit. Oh, well, I'm not going to be able to see it. Okay, so you see my lamp is almost dead center to the camera and behind it. So when we look here, that's almost exactly where the sun is in the video. So it is projecting forward, so that would make the sun back here. And it is, let's see, like this. And it is, you know, projecting basically this way. So I am, you know, doing what I can to get almost the same shadows projected onto the roof as they would actually be if the text was there in real life. So that is pretty much how the basics of tracking text is going to go. And then after that, it's all about you know picking the right uh, picking the right materials. You know you get your lighting down. That's one of the major things if you want to make something believable. And yeah, you are pretty much good to go. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention before after we do the solve. 
do the set scale, all that. Set as background, that's what's going to make sure that the back of the camera has this on it. And set up tracking scene is going to just automatically kind of put, I'll do it again actually, because I can delete them. See, it just puts this plane in here. Sometimes it puts a box. So we're just going to get rid of that for now. It just kind of sets something up for you to start working on. Um, and that is basically how you track some titles in this case. And uh, it's really kind of cool effect for any kind of video you're working on. Uh, I'm just learning it, but I figured I would share what I know. Took a little bit of trial and error to start getting them the way I like them, and uh, still a little practice to go, but enjoy and have fun with it. Thanks for watching. Bye.